The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, Chapter 16 Bryce, said the old woman, get away from that rabbit. I ain't paying you to stand and stare. Yes, ma'am, said Bryce. He wiped his nose with the back of his hand and continued to look up at Edward. The boy's eyes were brown with flecks of gold shining in them. Hey, he whispered to Edward. A crow settled on Edward's head and the boy flapped his arms and shouted, Go on, git! And the bird spread its wings and flew away. Bryce, shouted the old woman. Ma'am, said Bryce, get away from that rabbit. Do your work. I ain't going to say it again. Yes, ma'am, said Bryce. He wiped his hand across his nose. I'll be back to get you, he said to Edward. The rabbit spent the day hanging by his ears, baking in the hot sun, watching the old woman and Bryce weed and hoe the garden. Whenever the old woman wasn't looking, Bryce raised his hand and waved. The bird circled over Edward's head, laughing at him. What was it like to have wings? Edward wondered. If it had wings when he was tossed overboard, he would not have sunk to the bottom of the sea. Instead, he would have flown in the opposite direction, up and into the deep, bright blue sky. And when Lolly took him to the dump, he would have flown out of the rubbish and followed her and landed on her head, holding on with his sharp claws. And on the train, when the man kicked him, Edward would not have fallen to the ground. Instead, he would have risen up and sat on top of the train and laughed at the man. Go on, go on, go on. In the late afternoon, Bryce and the old lady left the garden. Bryce winked at Edward as he walked past him. One of the crows lighted on Edward's shoulder and tapped with its beak at Edward's china face, reminding the rabbit with each tap that he had no wings, that not only could he not fly, he could not move on his own at all in any way. Dust descended over the garden and then came true dark. A whip poor will sang out over and over again. Whip poor will, whip poor will. It was the saddest sound Edward had ever heard. And then came another song, the hum of a harmonica. Bryce stepped out of the shadows. Hey, he said to Edward. He wiped his nose with the back of his hand and then played another bit of a song on the harmonica. I bet you didn't think I'd come back, but here I am. I come to save you. Too late, thought Edward, as Bryce climbed the post and worked at the wires that were tied around his wrists. I am nothing but a hollow rabbit. Too late, thought Edward, as Bryce pulled the nails out of his ears. I am only a doll made of china. But when the last nail was out and he fell forward into Bryce's arms, the rabbit felt such a rush of relief and the feeling of relief was followed by one of joy. Perhaps he thought, it is not too late after all for me to be saved. Chapter 17 Bryce slung Edward over his shoulder. He started to walk. I come to get you for Sarah Ruth, Bryce said. You don't know Sarah Ruth. She's my sister. She's sick. She had a baby doll made out of china. She loved that baby doll. But he broke it. He broke it. He was drunk and stepped on that baby's head and smashed it into a hundred million pieces. Then pieces were so small, I couldn't make them go back together. I couldn't. I tried and tried. At this point in the story, Bryce stopped walking and shook his head and wiped at his nose with the back of his hand. Sarah Ruth ain't had nothing to play with since. He won't buy her nothing. He says she don't need nothing. He said she don't need nothing because she ain't going to live. But he don't know. Bryce started to walk again. He don't know, he said. Who he was was not clear to Edward. What was clear was that he was being taken to a child to make up for the loss of a doll. A doll. How Edward loathed dolls. And to be thought of as a likely replacement for a doll offended him. But still... It was, he had to admit, a highly preferable alternative to be to hanging by his ears from a post. The house in which Bryce and Sarah Ruth lived was so small and crooked that Edward did not believe at first that it was a house. He mistook it instead for a chicken coop. Inside, there were two beds and an oil lamp and not much else. 
Bryce laid Edward at the foot of one of the beds and then lit the lamp. Sarah, Bryce whispered. Sarah Ruth, you've got to wake up now, honey. I brung you something. He took the harmonica out of his pocket and played the beginning of a simple melody. The little girl sat up in bed and immediately started to cough. Bryce put his hand on her back. That's all right, he told her. That's OK. She was young, maybe four years old, and she had white blonde hair. And even in the poor light of the lamp, Edward could see that her eyes were the same, gold-flecked brown as Bryce's. That's right, said Bryce. You go on ahead and cough. Sarah Ruth obliged him. She coughed and coughed and coughed. On the wall of the cabin, the oil light cast her trembling shadow, hunched over and small. The coughing was the saddest sound that Edward had ever heard. Sadder even than the mournful call of the whip poor will. Finally, Sarah Ruth stopped. Bryce said, you want to see what I brung you? Sarah Ruth nodded. You've got to close your eyes. The girl closed her eyes. Bryce picked up Edward and held him so that he was standing straight, like a soldier, at the end of the bed. All right now, you can open them. Sarah Ruth opened her eyes and Bryce moved Edward's china legs and china arms so it looked as if he were dancing. Sarah Ruth laughed and clapped her hands. Rabbit, she said. He's for you, honey, said Bryce. Sarah Ruth looked first at Edward and then at Bryce and then back at Edward again, her eyes wide and disbelieving. He's yours. Mine? Sarah Ruth. Edward was soon to discover, rarely said more than one word at a time. Words at least several of them strung together made her cough. She limited herself. She said only what needed to be said. Yours, said Bryce. I got him special for you. This knowledge provoked another fit of coughing in Sarah Ruth and she hunched over again. When the fit was done, she uncurled herself and held out her arms. That's right, said Bryce. He handed Edward to her. Baby, said Sarah Ruth. She rocked Edward back and forth and stared down at him and smiled. Never in his life had Edward been cradled like a baby. Abilene had not done it, nor had Nelly, and most certainly Bull had not. It was a singular sensation to be held so gently and yet so fiercely, to be stared down at with so much love. Edward felt the whole of his china body flood with warmth. You going to give him a name, honey, Bryce said. Jangles, said Sarah Ruth without taking her eyes off Edward. Jangles, huh? That's a good name. I like that name. Bryce patted Sarah Ruth on the head. She continued to stare down at Edward. Hush, she said to Edward as she rocked him back and forth. From the minute I first seen him, said Bryce, I knew he belonged to you. I said to myself, that rabbit is for Sarah Ruth for sure. Jangles, murmured Sarah Ruth. Outside the cabin, thunder cracked, and then came the sound of rain falling on the tin roof. Sarah Ruth rocked Edward back and forth, back and forth, and Bryce took out his harmonica and started to play, making his song keep rhythm with the rain. <laughs>